Good morning and welcome to this live event on February 20th. This morning I want to look at our life, um, our brain and our experience as a giant snowball, an increasingly um, expanding snowball of memories and stories and experiences in our life. And I know that until um, a, a number of years ago, my sense was just that the life, what it was about, was just having more and more experiences. In fact, when I was in my 20s, um, a line that I heard one time in a, in a talk was, the search is the treasure and the treasure is the search. You know, this ever-expanding snowball of accumulating experiences. And um, in some theological circles, we call ourselves narrative, um, you know, we're people of a story, of a narrative that the traditions are that, and that it is really this all about story. I want to look at that in terms of synapses, of course, and brain cells, um, which have grabbed so much of my attention, my meaning-making machine, um, these last couple of years. But that each time we have a new experience, if it turns into a memory, right, brain cells are connected, neurons, at the synapse, and at that synapse, it's connected one of the molecules that's connecting it are peptides that are related to the emotion that we experience at the time. When does there come a time, or does there ever come a time, when it's better to start melting the snowball instead of continuing to expand it? And when you look at meditational practices, when you look at uh, practices of saying, that's enough, you know, now it's time to reflect. Um, that, in some sense, are we turning around and saying we've had enough of expanding the snowball, and now it's to get back to the energy or whatever it is that's behind it, instead of all of these experiences. In fact, if you look at it, um, the scientists now know that for the first seven years of our lives, we're basically living in, in a hypnotic state in terms of our, our brain waves. We're in what's called theta almost all the time. If you look at a little kid, they're just picking up experiences. They might be having their terrible twos and stuff, but they are basically, as uh, uh, Bruce Lipton says, they are getting the download. They are getting the download of experiences. They're wiring together in their synapses. They're cementing with the emotional molecules that's going to provide their pattern, my pattern, for the rest of my life. Okay? So the snowball is being formed in those first seven years, and then we roll it out for the rest of our lives. The question is, does there ever come a time to go and look back at, you know, the way this snowball is rolling? I keep having this experience over and over again. And for those of us, that it's like, oh, you know, it doesn't have to just keep autopilot, like rolling down this hill all the time the same way that there is perhaps an option to go back and to start working on the story itself rather than simply just building new synapses, new memories that are just reflections of the old ones, we can actually go back and pay attention to those old stories, those old memories, those old synapses, those old peptides, molecules of emotion and the ones that have a charge on them that have set up the pattern for our snowball. We can actually use the ice method, we can use memory reconsolidation, and we can simply dissolve those. And as I get more and more into this work and look at um, the ice method and memory reconsolidation, it's certainly excellent for relieving physical pain that's related to an stress, or it's certainly great for removing emotional stresses and anxieties. But when you look at the bigger picture of life, we come into this life and we almost immediately begin, in fact, before our birth even, we begin to connect synapses together to build mind based on our experiences of, of the world. And we reach a point where it's kind of set. And then we begin reacting to that, moving towards the things that are safe, avoiding those that aren't safe had a dog trainer for our last dog that we went to who said something I'd never heard before and it made complete sense. 
He said, you know, you've got your dog Milo. He's eight weeks old now. You have until Milo is four months old to show him what's safe in the world and what's dangerous. Okay, four months. And Bruce Lipton is saying for children it's seven months. Basically where we get the download. And so he gave me this project, gave our family this project, this long list. He said, I want you to go and meet the postman. I want you to go and meet the UPS man because their uniforms are different actually. I want you to walk through town. I want you to go up by a motorcycle that's off. Um, I want you to go down by the dock. I want you to do all these different things in the first months because when your dog is with you during that time and gets the signal that this is safe, the dog says, okay, this is part of my safe world. After four months, the brainwave um, frequency changes, and that's basically a set pattern for us now, unless we do some special things, of what our life um, is in terms of safe and not safe. Okay, four months for a dog, seven months for a human. And it's very clear that for our dog, there are things now that uh, don't even don't even phase him. He can be around a motorcycle. Uh, that gets started up, barely looks. Okay, But there are other things where he gets activated or afraid. And that wasn't part of what became safe for him. Okay, And it's the same thing for all of us humans. Things that feel safe and things that we want to avoid. Things that get a charge out of us. Because that was part of this download that we got. If you ever reach the point in your life where it's like, gosh, I want to work on that. I just don't want to be bugged by that thing anymore. The wonderful thing is that the ICE method uses this thing called memory reconsolidation. And memory reconsolidation is a scientific discovery that you can actually go back and replace the peptide molecules stored in those old synapses such that they no longer bother us anymore. And when you're going back and you're working at that download material, right, the stuff that we got those first seven years, it's not that those are harder to change or to remove. It's more of them. Okay? So for myself personally, I've done a lot of work of melting that snowball of the things from my download, my first seven years, that um, became strong patterns that I ended up becoming reactive to. And those have become so much calmer. But sometimes a new situation will show up. I'm in a new situation. It feels like the old thing is coming back. Well, it's because that new situation triggers a different, uh, actually different brain cells in my mind that were part of the story that I created early on. And they hadn't been activated before in that other setting. And when they show up now, I know enough that it's, wow. I'm not calm in this moment, but I know that I can be calm. There's no physical threat here. I can just use the ice method. I identify what it is that's not calm, move out into a calm space using the two-point method, right? You can find that at the website, myfibromyalgiarelief.com, and then observe back from that state to the agitation. And I know that I'm replacing peptides that have been stored since I was a child. And I just continue doing that process back and forth for whatever shows up until I'm back in a calm state. This is very different than the sense, the feeling, right? That my snowball of life is just rolling out of control. That what happened yesterday is going to happen tomorrow. Not the same event, but the same dynamic is always going to happen. I'm always going to get upset in this kind of a situation. I'm always going to feel safe only in this kind of a situation. Okay, memory reconsolidation actually gives us the promise of being able to go in, calm agitated peptides, and build a much larger safe zone for our life. Does it happen automatically? No, it happens when something shows up that's not calm. And then we make that calm. And then we're calm and we're fine until the next thing shows up. Do you have to do it forever? I don't know. What I do know is that more and more of my life ends up being calm. 
that less and less frequently do I end up in a charge situation that that is upsetting my calm. But when it does, I can reconsolidate that and bring that into calm. Okay, I wanted to share this because it's become clear to me that I really used to live out of this idea that I had this pattern and that was the pattern of my life. As I look around, I mean that's what the human condition is. We received a pattern and now we keep doing that pattern unless we find some different way. The ICE method is an extraordinarily simple way, right? You don't have to push on this ball. You don't have to push it, and dig it apart or whatever, this big snowball. You simply pay attention to the way it's rolling. Pay attention to whatever emotion is showing up that's not calm. And actually remove that from the snowball. Keep what you want, remove what you want. It's a great system for getting a life of freedom. So instead of the ball just rolling down that particular hill, we now get the opportunity actually to stop and start walking a different path, living a path of freedom and the choice that we want to make. All right, hope this is helpful for kind of just thinking about this dynamic of who we are as people that live out of stories that we're always putting together. The ICE method is a way of getting freedom to make the story that you want for your life. All right, thanks a lot. Have a great day.